Good morning, everybody. Well, Mohammed bin Hamam is one of the most powerful people in global football, and he may never have been so powerful as he is right now. Not only is he president of the Asian Football Confederation, which is the largest regional federation and the one where football is growing fastest, but he's also a FIFA Exco member. He's one of the 24 men who on December 2nd in Zurich will decide the destination of two World Cups. He has said that he's going to vote for his native Qatar for 2022. And Qatar 2022 is also sponsoring this session, so a big thank you to them. There's more. He's in a sense the gatekeeper for the Premier League's attempt to grow its fan base in Asia. And that may somewhat conflict with the objectives of Asian clubs who want to get more fans of their own. Now, I think that as a boy in Qatar, you fell for football reading about Liverpool in the newspapers, because in those days I think there was no hope of actually watching them play from Qatar. You've seen an enormous rise in Asian interest in football since you entered the game. Can you give us a sense of how quickly that's gone in recent years, what sort of fan life is like in Asia as compared to what you knew? Uh, well, first of all, I'd like actually to thank the organizers for uh, uh, inviting me to this uh, wonderful uh, platform. And uh, I would just like to correct something of your statement, Simon, if I may. I'm not the most powerful person in this room. I think there are so many people are more powerful than me. We have here some of AFC's vice president, uh, sorry, FIFA vice president, some of uh, my colleagues who are more senior than me and, uh, and the AFC, so, uh, and FIFA, sorry, I'm talking about AFC because I'm the AFC president. But nevertheless, uh, yes, uh, I, I uh, supported Liverpool since I was in the, in the school and the young age. Uh, naturally, just because we were reading about, about the fo uh, English football. But uh, when we grown up, uh, naturally we saw that how important was the English football and you know, with the popularity of the Premier League in a later stage, we, uh, we, we witnessed actually the right football or the correct football. Well, I took over AFC in 2002 as the president and uh, actually we spared uh, spare no effort, not only me, but all my colleagues in the executive committee of uh, AFC to uh, enhance the role of football and, and uh, also to develop the game further. I believe we have achieved so many uh, achievements uh, so far. I just will take uh, two uh, examples happened this year, 2010. During the world, uh, one one of them is during the World Cup in uh, South Africa, where uh, our team's performances was uh, were excellent according to what we think. Two of our teams advanced to the uh, second round, uh, the round 16, Japan and Korea. And uh, actually, it is only by pure luck that we uh, uh, departed. We have left that uh, uh, wonderful uh, tournament. I can say also that. Uh, our teams has been coached by Asian coaches. It is not, nothing has to be done with Asian or not Asian, but just to tell you how also the other element of the football is developed in Asia, the coaches. So it was being led by Asian coaches. Our uh, referees' performances was excellent in, in the World Cup. They, you know, some of our referees have officiated as much as five matches. No, no other referees from other continent has done so. Uh, this is one example I want to, to, uh, to present uh, about our uh, football development. Second, in uh, under-17 under uh, World Cup uh, this year in, uh, in Trinidad and Tobago, just recently finished, in the semifinals there were three Asian teams with one non-Asian team. So it looks to the world that it was rather it is AFC competition than a World Cup uh, competition. So this is actually just a few examples of how the game has been developed now in Asia and how keen the executive committee member of Asia are you know, trying to, to, to push uh, further development of the game. Well, you've become much better at playing football and Asians are very interested in watching football, but in many countries they largely watch our football. In China, in Malaysia, in Thailand. Isn't that a bit of a problem? Not at all, not at all. Today, today actually, uh, we talk about football not only 
uh, a game and, and football as such doesn't have a nationality, you know. Uh, football is a universal game. And, you know, you, 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 you would like to, to see uh, the best. I am, I am, I am myself as, as a, a great fan of, uh, of the Premier League. I, I will not deny it. I watch uh, 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 the English football, uh, you know, as much maybe as I, I watch uh, the, the Asian football because I am connected to the Asian uh, football. So in, uh, in my opinion, actually, the people all around the world would like to see the best, uh, the best football. And, uh, and uh, uh, I, don't see it, I don't see it a problem. I encourage people to see other uh, football, whether it is English or other, other, in other countries. I would like to see the people to see the best talented players playing football. So that's uh, never, never constituted any problem for me. But it does hamper, it seems, the growth of Asian clubs. I mean, nobody in China seems to care about Chinese clubs, a tiny proportion. When is that going to change? No, they ha they, in China they do support their football, their Chinese football. I think in China, the Chinese football came first, and Qatar, Qatar football came first. In any country, you know, their, their, their own football came first. But they do love to see also the, the other football uh, in Europe, and uh, especially maybe in the Premier League. So this is, uh, this, is, this is, as I said, never a problem for us. Your own status in football is not just as AFC president, it's also as a FIFA Exco member, which you've been for 14 years now. And the moment of truth is approaching, and the whole world is going to be looking at the 24 of you. Can you tell us a little bit about this committee, who these people are, how do you get to be an Exco committee member? How do you work? Uh, you have to be elected through your uh, own confederation congress uh, and uh, the, the, the today we have eight members from Europe uh, coming from UEFA, four coming uh, from CAF, Africa, four coming from Asia, uh, three coming from uh, the Caribbean and, uh, and uh, Central and North America, and uh, three coming from uh, Common Ball uh, from South America. And, uh, uh, and the president. So t we are a total of, uh, of 24 coming from different, uh, uh, different uh, confederations. A actually, yes, we are coming from different confederations, different con continents, but our aim always is to, you know, to decide for, for, the, uh, for the football in whole. You know? I mean, we don't take actually that narrow, narrow view about our confederations. We, we look always for the universality of the game and you know, decide globally. We don't decide for ourselves. Yes, sometimes you know, I, I think you know, our interest is there, but you know, normally and usually we are looking for a bigger picture. We are looking for all the world. But these are also individual people with their own interests and power bases in the game, surely that will influence some of their decision making on December 2nd, as well as just the good of the game in general? In a, ve in, in a, very, limited, uh, in a very limited scale, you know. I mean, there, were, there is always this uh, difference of opinions, you know, where, uh, yes, you know, you find some pe sometimes, you know, people are directing themselves this way or that way. But I, I believe within, within, within FIFA, we are, very much democratic. We we are free to raise whatever opinion we we want without fear, without uh, you know taking it very sensitive. And uh, at the end of the day, the, the 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 opinion of the of the you know majority uh, has to prevail and has to decide the issue. You yourself have said in the end that you are going to vote for Qatar. Has that upset some people in Asia? I don't think so. I mean, we have we have four bids uh, coming from Asia. It is an Australian bid where they don't have any representative in uh, in the executive committee. But I can I can uh, promise you that all of us will be Asia uh, Australian representative when uh, Australia is in the race and other bids are not in the race. We have a Korean uh, bid and uh, we have a representative from Korea and. Uh, and uh, in FIFA Exco, we have a Japanese bid, and we have uh, a, a Japanese representative. And I presume, and I'm 100% sure, that everybody is going to, call, to to vote his his own country in the first place. And so only maybe if his country or my country out, then we are going to support the other bids uh, in in Asia. 
So it's going to be a knockout process, and in later rounds, people will, in the end, largely get behind their continental candidate, and that's true of all the continents. Uh, of course, you know, we are uh, coming from different continents again, you know, and, and I do believe that 2018 will be uh, limited to Europe. I'm, I'm not talking about the United States on, or on behalf of the United States. But, uh, you know, this is the common understanding among ourselves. At least we in Asia decided to support Europe in 2000, uh, 2018. Yes, but we are going to vote, uh, you know, one country from Europe. On the other hand, also in 22, uh, 2022, there will be another uh, uh, vote where Europe has to vote for one of the, uh, of the bidders, you know, from other continent. Mm -hmm. And that is accompanied by, I would imagine, a lot of horse trading. You vote for me, I vote for you in the other World Cup. Oh, well, this is, a, camp this is a, a, a campaign, you know, where naturally, you know, I'm not going to, to tell you, I'm not going to vote for you, but you have to vote for me. I mean, this is, uh, you know, ridiculous. It doesn't happen like that, of course, you know. Everybody has to, uh, uh, to have a chance to, to support his, his bid. And uh, I'm sure that, you know, everybody, uh, all of the nine bidders uh, never faced anybody said that he is not uh, going to get the vote of this or that person. It means that the promises are are huge, you know. I mean, uh, in this uh, in these uh, cases. Uh, but let me tell you that you know, when uh, FIFA called for bid or for 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 the bids, there was no certain criteria where you know, we should follow mm -hmm. and we should restrict ourselves, for example, why we should apologize from anybody. We are not going to vote for you because you are this or you're that. There is no criteria. So as it is open bid and criteria is have no ceiling, no limit. So yes, we are free actually to, to, uh, to encourage every, uh, every bidder that uh, he has the right uh, to, to dream about hosting uh, uh, the World Cup. And uh, we are not going to discourage anybody, uh, you know, in this, in this state.